That's a good point. Now I want to get into a fun one. Okay. I, this is actually a, a a Christian friend of mine who I grew up with. I was talking to this was a couple months ago, and he's we're talking about science, and he said, "Well, what about quantum entanglement?" He said, yeah, quantum, "Quantum entanglement means means that there could be a you, you could be quantumly entangled with the creator right now, and he's watching everything you're doing." Well, you know, yeah, but people like to 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 throw out these terms from physics, and it sort of upsets me. I'm just fixing my camera. I'm sorry. Yeah, sure. Um. The, because they don't understand what they're talking about. Um, and quantum physics, you know, people love to bandy terms of quantum physics around. But quantum entanglement, which exists, which is a central property of quantum mechanics, it, it means that there are correlations between... I'm going to try and get the focus of this better. Sure. It means that there are correlations between separate objects, which are not really separate because they're they're in the, have sort of part of a single wave function. But those quantum correlations get destroyed very easily by interactions, which is why you and I behave classically, and we don't we don't have the characteristics that an electron has in an atom. And so, <laughs> quantum entanglement is incredibly easily destroyed. And physicists are trying to create systems where quantum entanglement can exist over macroscopic scales, and they have to be very, very, very clever to be able to do that, in either or or cool systems down or isolate them very carefully. So random objects are not quantumly entangled with the world around them in, in that sense. And they're, they're quite classical because those quantum correlations get destroyed. That's the thing about quantum mechanics is it's so hard. It's so like bizarre, I guess you would say, that it, not the average person doesn't understand it so no, much. I mean, none of us understand that. I'm sorry, this camera. It's okay. It's not a focus. There we go. There we um, go. Now it looks good. The, the, the uh, yeah, no, it, well, you know, Feynman, who was understood quantum mechanics as well as everyone else, said no one understands quantum mechanics. It's, it's it's a very that's because we are classical beings and our intuition is classical, and quantum mechanical laws violate that classical intuition, and therefore um, we don't have an innate understanding of quantum mechanics. We can understand the mathematics of quantum mechanics and make predictions and build devices like the devices that's powering my computer and yours, and and the and and pretty well almost everything in your room is based on on quantum mechanics. Uh, so we can work with it very effectively, but but the but but the, the sort of the properties of quantum mechanics cannot be expressed easily in terms of the classical concepts which we innately understand because we're classical beings. Yeah, and it seems like because it's one of those things that because people don't understand it, you can, it they just can apply it to just make it woo woo this woo woo that. And yeah, I know, I know. And it's really abused more than any other area of physics. And it upsets me, but I try to get over it. So speaking of like quantum entanglement and stuff and stuff, that's really, really bizarre. You, so you talk about atoms popping in and out of existence. How does that happen? Can you kind of that? It's quantum mechanics. Um, I mean, particles can pop in and out of existence because quantum mechanics on small scales allows fluctuations. The Heisenberg uncertainty principle means that basically on small enough scales over small enough times, more or less anything goes. Uh, if you can't measure what's happening there, then all sorts of things can be happening. And not only can they be happening, they can all be happening at the same time. So it's 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 really crazy. So but that means the fact that we can't see them doesn't make them imaginary anymore like God. It, it because because unlike God, there we can make predictions of side of, of these these particles which we can't see that are popping in out of existence affect directly the property of things like atoms in a calculable way. And when we calculate based on their existence, we come if we don't include them, we get the wrong answers for, for the structure of atoms. When we include them, we get the right answers, but not just the right answers, the right answers to 14 decimal places, the best predictions in all of physics. So we know they're there. Yeah, and so when people who aren't educated with a religious agenda, hear things like that. When, when they hear scientists, when they hear PhD scientists say atoms can pop in and out of existence, they're going to say, well, there you go. Ghosts can and angels and demons can pop well, in and out of existence. It's I mean, proven by science. Believe, people who really want to believe are going to want to believe whatever you, no matter what you say. Most people. Uh, I'm not. Some people. Many people can be, can be, can, can confront their own misconceptions and thereby learn something. That's what we call learning. But some people are so committed to their ideological stances, whether they're religious or whether they're woke, that no matter what the reality of, of existence is, you can't convince them otherwise. Yeah. And, and another strange 
experiment, I should say, is this split hole experiment where I think it was misunderstood in the beginning and then sort of got figured out over time. I don't know if you want to take us through what happened with that. Well, well, I mean, the two slit experiment, is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, well, I mean, I don't know if it's misunderstood, but it's a, it's a beautiful demonstration of quantum mechanics. So of the fact that particles are, are wave-like, like electrons. You know, if I take a, if I take a, a wall and I cut two slits in it and I have a machine gun and I just keep shooting back and forth, if I look behind the wall, I'll see two spots where there are a lot of bullets right behind the, the slits. Because, But if I take a, a wave like light or sound or water, in fact, just I was just looking at my dock back there and I saw a perfect example of this phenomenon. If you have a wave going through two slits, there'll be what's called an interference pattern and there'll be all sorts of light and dark spots or in case of waves, spots with a lot of waving and spots that are completely calm. And, um, and so... The question, so the idea was, well, let's test and see if electrons are particles or waves. So you take, you take electrons and you, you throw them at the, the slits and, and, and then you look at the pattern that comes out and, uh, and it's wave-like, it's got interference patterns. And you say, well, that's crazy because the particle went through one slit or another, it didn't go through both. And so you actually have shine a light or an electron detector if you want. And it indeed, it, it then detects each electron going through one slit or another. But when you do that, lo and behold, you look behind the, the slits and the pattern is different than it was before. It's now that of bullets. So in the process of observing the electrons to see which slit it went to, you change the pattern. If you don't observe, then the electrons literally go through both slits at the same time and interfere with themselves. So am I here? And let me just, am I hearing you right? You're saying our observing the demonstration actually affects what happens? Yeah, that's, that's a property of quantum mechanics. That is Observ so observation affects the end result or can affect the end result it doesn't always, but it can. So, okay. So everything's waves basically, right? And particles and particles. And when they go through these holes, they the electron is not, is not localized. The electron, if you're not looking at it, is in many places at once. Wow. If you measure it, it'll always be in one place. But if you don't measure it until you measure it, it's in many different places at the same time doing many different things. And then and, that, and the and the probability that you'll find it in any of those places is is de, is determined precisely and accurately by quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics gives you the rules to determine the probability that that electron, which is in many places a, at the same time, when you actually measure it, the probability you'll find it in this place versus that place. That can be determined exactly using the pro, the laws of quantum mechanics. Wow, it's so bad. And then so. People, like I said, like I'm, I'm always going to go back to this because this is this is sort of the whole point. People, people with uneducated with a religious uh, agenda will hear that and say, "Well, look, where if everything's wavicles, what is a word? A word is a vibration. It's God's word. Oh, look, we're all God's word." So you get those. It's it's very malleable when it comes to trying to fit uh, quantum science because it's so. Out of the or it's so different from classical mechanics. It uh, is. Well, it is. It's as different as can be. But but any of the laws of physics can be distorted by people to suggest that God exists if they want if they want it hard enough. 